Our next speaker is Emmanuel Kowalski from Zurich, who will speak on examples of SIDON sets arising in algebraic geometry. Okay, yeah. so thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, I must first maybe apologize for missing most of the other talks. I'm actually uh, one of the speakers in a, in a summer school in North Carolina at the moment also, which is taking the whole week. Okay, so I've just re, uh, rewritten here to start the definition of a Sidon set. I mean, there's been a number of talks already and I presume this definition has been seen many times, but just so that everything is clear. So we have some abelian group and some subset in that abelian group. And we say it's a Sidon set when the equation A1 plus A2 equals A3 plus A4 has only the obvious solutions. So either A1 is A3 or A1 is A4. Okay, and what I want to, uh, to talk about is really, I mean, it doesn't really deserve to be called a theorem or even a proposition or even a lemma. Um, it's really an observation that, so, uh, that we realized uh, in ongoing work with Arthur Foray and Javier Fresan about some completely different topics. And it's not even due really to ourselves because we found this observation by trying to understand the theorem of Nick Katz that's unpublished. And uh, it's pretty clear that the proof he used uh, depended on this fact. So this proposition is the following. I'll state it first and then explain the words uh, if some of them are not clear. So we uh, take a field, uh, C over K is a smooth, so a nice algebraic curve, smooth projective, geometrically connected curve uh, over K of genus at least two and not hyperelliptic. So I will, I will try to explain all of these words after the statement. Uh, then there is something called the Jacobian of C. And I take the points defined over K. It's an abelian group. Then there is a way to inject C, uh, the, the K rational points, let's say, into A. Be the, so one of the, there are different ways to do it. So one of the emotions. Again, I will explain how it goes. Uh, then the image of C of K inside A is a Sidon set. Okay, so that's, that's the statement. And I'm going to try and explain concretely what all these words mean. And then I'll, I'll essentially have the time to give the proof. And I will then maybe if I have some time, make a few more comments, questions and, and variants. So I'm going to give the explanation of the words in maybe what's the most interesting case for, uh, for some persons, at least for us, it's the motivation. It's when the field is a finite field. Um, then I'll write K bar is FP bar, the, an algebraic closure. Uh, so the curve can be defined, for instance, by as being a plane curve. It doesn't have to be, but it could be like that. There are different possibilities, for instance. But any curve would do. In which case, you have to add points at infinity to make it projective. Uh, not hyper elliptic means it cannot be reduced to a form y squared equals some polynomial. This would be the hyper elliptic case. Then uh, I'm going to try and define what is A in that case. So A is some kind of class group and uh, First, we define A of K bar. 
so kind of the points on the algebraic closure, this would be all the formal combination of weights times points on the curve. So this is a formal combination, so finite. The coefficients are in Z. The points are all the solutions of the, let's say in that case of the equation F of X, Y is zero. Um, maybe I should call P the points to be precise. So uh, all these where the sum of the NPs is zero. So these are so-called divisors of degree zero. Modulo, so it's a formal uh, abelian group. It's a free group with infinitely many generators. Uh, and then you take the quotient by the set of divisors. So these combinations, which are obtained by taking for every point, the valuation of a function, a function on the curve with values. So which potentially has poles, so f from c to p1, uh, non-constant. Okay, so uh, a standard fact, uh, which corresponds to things uh, that arise also in complex uh, geometry is that if you have a meromorphic function, it has as many poles as zeros with multiplicities. Uh, if you have a rational function, and this is the case here also, which means that the sum of the valuations is zero. So this subgroup D zero is really a subgroup of a of k bar. And then we have a quotient. This becomes, uh, so this is an infinite abelian group. And to obtain A of k, which is the group we really are interested in in the finite field case, is just going to be the, the fixed points of the Frobenius action. So the Frobenius acts on the points of the curve. Uh, it acts also then on the divisors and uh, it respects D zero. And uh, if you look at the fixed points, you get a certain finite abelian group. It's maybe not clear that it's finite, but it is finite. Okay, now we can prove the observation based on this description. So I get some random lines coming up here. Um, so suppose, oh, I didn't tell you what is what is the embedding. I should say that. So this will go here. And what is I? So fix uh, an X zero point defined over the finite field. And then uh, I of a point is just the divisor with one coordinate x minus x zero. Okay. So this gives you uh, this embedding. It's not obvious that it's an embedding, uh, but it follows from the fact that the curve has, has genus at least two, or at least a genus at least one would be enough. Right. So I haven't tell, said exactly what is the genus, but, uh, We'll see how the observation goes. So it's quite simple. Uh, so the equation, the Sidon type equation means that you have four points satisfy this relation. So I of X one plus I of X two equals I of X three plus I of X four. Now, uh, if X one is not either X three or X four, then that means there is no cancellation in this formal linear combination when you think of this as divisors. So that means that the divisor x1 plus x2, so class, so the formal basis vector x1 plus formal basis vector x2 equals this, which means that there, as I said, there is no cancellation when you do x1 minus x3. Uh, or x1 minus x4. So this is really a combination of four points. It is zero uh, in A of k bar or A of k over a k bar doesn't matter for being equal to zero. Uh, and what this means is that by definition of D zero, so this thing is in D zero. So I mean, there exists a function 
non-constant from the curve to P1 uh, with two zeros at X1 and X2 and two poles at X3 and X4. And here it, there could be multiplicity too. It could be that X1 is equal to X2. It doesn't matter for the argument. Okay, and that means that the degree of F must be at most two because the degree is the number of uh, pre-images of a point and it's always constant when you take into account multiplicity. Uh, and so for instance here, the pre-image of zero is just two points potentially with multiplicity, but it's at, at most two. And this is a definition uh, of an hyperelliptic curve. Okay, so to see that certainly when, with the examples I gave of hyperelliptic curves, when you have y squared equals g of x, then uh, a function of degree two is uh, the y coordinate um, or the x coordinate, I should say, because for each value of x, there's at most two values of y. And usually there's only two, exactly two. Okay, so this is actually a, a complete proof of this observation which is really a, a formal thing. So now the question is, why should this be interesting? Uh, why should one care about such a trivial observation? And this is what I want to try and discuss now in the, in the next few minutes. Okay, so now remarks. So the remarks are, are the following. So first, in terms of finite Sidon sets, uh, much of the interest in combinatorics is uh, to try and make them as dense as possible. And that actually is related to the original uh, use that Sidon uh, put Sidon sets to in, uh, in Fourier analysis. So the question is, so what uh, is the size of the Sidon sets that we get compared to that of A, of course. Uh, in this case of, of finite fields. Um, so, and it's here we need much more involved mathematics in order to, uh, to answer this question. So it's a consequence of the Riemann hypothesis for curves and their Jacobians. So it's really due to Andre Weil. Uh, so in one of his proofs of the Riemann hypothesis, well, actually, in in his proof of the Riemann hypothesis, that's actually proved it both for the curves and the Jacobian simultaneously. That, so the number of points are in S, so that's the number of points on the curve of a finite field. And it's between uh, P plus one plus twice the genus times square root of P and P plus one minus twice the genus. So roughly speaking, P uh, of size P, if we think that P is very large, uh, this would be uh, the order of magnitude. And again, from the definition with invariance under Frobenius of some complicated quotient, it's absolutely not obvious, but it follows from the Riemann hypothesis of finite fields that the size of A is between square root of P plus one to the power two G and square root of P minus one to the power two G. So one of them is of size approximately P and the other one is of size approximately p to the power g. So in terms of dense sets, so for density purposes, the best case is when g equal two, in which case we'd have something of size square root of p, uh, of size p inside a group of size p square, which could be quite interesting. But all of these, all these curves of genus two are hyperelliptic. Okay. So it turns out there's, there's a small variant of the observation one can uh, obtain in, still in the hyperelliptic case. So one can check, and it's, it's really essentially the same argument uh, that, um, so essentially, okay, I don't want to. 
if you just keep, so in the abelian group, capital A, if for every element uh, in, the, in the set capital S, you keep either this element or its opposite, but you never keep this element and its opposite. And, and this is always the case. Um, okay, so first, so one can check that in that case, S is minus S up to, maybe that depends on the choice of X zero to define the embedding and keeping just one of each pair X minus S. So of I of X minus I of X for each X. This is a real Cylon set. Okay, so now we have approximately one half of the size of S, which is essentially P over two in uh, a group of size P squared. So that's the best density that one can apparently achieve with this construction. So it's not as dense as the best known uh, Cidon sets, but uh, it only fails up to a constant. And so in terms of, let's say, trying to uh, figure out what could be the, or if there is a classification of dense Cidon sets, uh, I think that uh, Sean Eberhardt has talked about this uh, earlier. Uh, this shows that if you go into the regime where the size of the set is alpha times the square root of the size of the group, uh, you have to take into account examples of that kind. They are of some algebraic nature, but uh, they are not, not straightforward. In particular, remark two is maybe the uh, related remark is that, so if we look still at genus two, there is a three parameter uh, space of hyper elliptic curves of genus two. Okay, and, and the group, so the group structure of A when we vary along these lines, uh, well, can be quite complicated, but is let's say often, at least experimentally, it's often cyclic for instance. So questions like what are the possible group structures of, uh, of, of such groups, uh, like points of Jacobians over finite fields uh, is very interesting. And uh, for instance, has been studied a lot in, in cryptography. And there are conjectures and heuristics. So this, what I'm saying here is, uh, is, is, is quite, quite safe. I don't know if it's actually proved rigorously, but it's quite safe. So we're going to get lots of Cidon sets of size about uh, P over two in a, in a group of size about P squared when we take P large. Okay, um, now another related uh, remark is, is a question now. So as I said, so for density purposes, we only get uh, at most with this construction P over two in a group of size P squared, but then a natural question in algebraic geometry would be, uh, so again, let A be the Jacobian uh, of C where C is genus two. Okay, so we know that the image of the curve inside A is not a Cidon set. It's only has this additional symmetry property, but we can ask uh, for algebraic geometry, is there another curve? So C prime different from C in A which is a Cidon set. Okay. So by the Riemann hypothesis, this curve would now give you uh, Cidon sets of size about P in a group of size about P squared. Again, because of the Riemann hypothesis of a finite fields. Uh, so that's an intriguing question. Um, I, I don't know the answer. I, I, I presume that using algebraic geometry, one should be able to, to figure it out. Uh, whatever the answer is, it's interesting. So if, if there is such a curve, this will give a pretty surprising, I think, dense Cidon sets, uh, really of size, roughly the square root of the, 
of the size of the group. Uh, and if they do not exist, then it's an interesting fact from algebraic geometry, which is not obvious, um, which would be motivated by this question. Okay. Uh, now, the last remarks I want to do. So how did we come to that? So what are the applications? So why did we uh, come up with this? And uh, before us, probably uh, Nick Katz. So, the, uh, so this uh, arises in proving, so equidistribution statements for some families of exponential sums. Okay, so following, uh, as I said, some unpublished work of Nick Katz that we generalized uh, uh, using uh, the so-called Larsen alternative. Uh, to compute a certain group, a certain type of Galois group. So it's quite a, a long and relatively complicated story, but it's, it's fairly beautiful. So we want to show that a certain group, let's say is the special linear group. There's a, a wonderful fact also relatively elementary due to Larsen that says that we only have to compute a certain quantity and show that it's equal to two. And then uh, in the exponential sum that we are looking at, we translate uh, using orthogonality of characters, this quantity that we need to evaluate to essentially counting the number of solutions of Sidon's equation in the case of this, uh, of this set obtained from a curve in the Jacobian. And uh, the number of solutions is, uh, well, you can choose x1 uh, freely and x2 freely, and then you have either x3 and x4 or x4 and x3. So you get two times p and the two is precisely the two that we want for Lassen's alternative. So we really have uh, a long pass from something extremely elementary, extremely basic, um, these finite season sets to uh, equidistribution of exponential sums. So which is uh, certainly to my mind, at least a, a very nice illustration of the fact that uh, in number theory, we have mathematics coming from uh, every area that, uh, that can be useful uh, to get what we want. And I think I can stop here. Okay. Emmanuel, Beyond thank time. you very, very much. That was great. Um, so I have a question, particularly sure. because uh, Sean Everhart is still uh, with us. Yep. And uh, the question is maybe for the two of you, which is how these examples coming from uh, algebraic curves are connected with the idea that dense Sidon sets should be related to automorphisms of finite projective planes, finite projective, yeah, finite projective planes. So I think from what I know of algebraic geometry, I think it's very unlikely that these are of that kind, but they are not as dense as the ones that I think that uh, Eberhardt and Manners have been trying to classify. So the, what I think is that this means that there might be an algebraic description of, of sets of Sidon sets of size alpha uh, square root of p, but it would have to, to use this kind of algebraic structures. So algebraic curves and the Jacobians. Right. I don't know what Sean thinks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I agree. So I think that um, if, if, you, if, you have, if you're trying to classify Sidon sets of size a constant times square root of size of the group, um, where the constant is allowed to drop below a half or down to a tenth or whatever, then there appear to be a, a growing variety of algebraic, possible algebraic um, origins that you have to account for. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions or comments? We still have a couple of minutes. So Sean, are you saying that 
uh, your idea about the connection between dense synod sets and projective planes is uh, only when the, the size of the synod set is at least C root N, where C is bounded away from one or bounded away from zero? In fact, when, when, it's, when the constant, the constant has to be close to one. So we're classifying, we're not even classifying, conjecturing a classification for seed on sets of size at least 0.99 times the square root of the size of the group. So if one of these algebraic geometry constructions produced a seed on set um, without sacrificing a factor of two, um, which I don't know is impossible, then that would certainly right. um, it would certainly sink uh, the things that Freddie and Freddie and I were right. guessing. Might yeah. Be so so this this is essentially this question would be one. So if the answer to this question is positive, so if we can find at least in many cases curves which are Sidon sets in Jacobians of curves of genus two, this quite likely would give examples which are not related to finite projective planes because the, the sets of possible group structures would be too different from, from those from five projective plane, I would guess. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping to think about this question a bit with some people more uh, knowledgeable in algebraic geometry. Uh, and I think it could be an interesting question to answer. Oh, so, since no one else has a question. Sean, uh, have you written up uh, your work with uh, Freddie Manners? I looked on uh, archive and did not see anything. Uh, no, it's, it's not on the archive yet. Um, it's sort of in preparation. Okay, if there are no other questions, I thank Emmanuel for a extraordinarily you. interesting talk. And Thanks. the next, uh, lecture will be in uh, about three minutes.